Welcome back to the second part of this video on Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuits. Um, we left off, we defined our VTH in terms of VI up here, and uh, we're trying to find our uh, equivalent resistance, RTH. And we said we were going to start by defining a node to apply KCL at. Uh, so we defined node A, and uh, we're simply going to apply KCL at node A. And I want to keep this all on the same screen, so let me do a little cleanup work right here. I hope you guys remember this bit. We don't need this anymore. So we'll take that out and we'll slide this all up. Okay. Good. So we're going to apply KCL here. So what we have, the current's coming, let's see. We want to use IX. Well, let me define the end goal real quick. Um, what we're looking to do here is that RTH, right? We're looking from outside in. Uh, so RTH is going to be our test voltage, Vx, by the short circuit current that we have over there, I sub x. That's going to give us our RTH. <coughs> and you're going to see that if we leave IX in terms, what's going to happen if we leave IX in terms of VX is the VXs will cancel. Okay? So all we have to do is define I sub X. To do that, like we said, we're going to apply KCL at node A here. And let's go ahead. Let's move on with that. So we have IX. We need to know I sub X. So I sub X is coming into node A, right? So I sub X is going to be, in this case, okay, well what happened here is because we applied this test voltage, I sub two has actually changed directions on us, right? So this is no longer negative. Actually, it was still negative. It was still the same direction. I didn't have to change anything. This is just complicating things. I s I'm sorry for the complication, but yeah, that's still negative. Because I2 is actually coming down, right? We defined that earlier. And that's confusing me, which means it's probably confusing you. So just remember that I2 is really going down. That's why there's this negative sign here. So we're going to say that um, coming into this node is I sub X. Coming out of the node is I2. So we have, let me grab the color I was using before. I don't know which color that was. Uh, so coming out of that node, we have I2. It's really negative, negative I2, whatever. And beta I. Uh, now we have to make two observations, and we should be done here. Uh, the first observation that you need to make, and I'll put a comma here, and I'll write our observations uh, over here. Uh, the first observation to make is that Okay, what's beta i? Let's look at this term right here. Beta i is beta times i. Here's our current i. Now, remember, we shorted this whole branch out, so i is 0. If i is 0, beta i is obviously also 0. So we're going to say that beta i is equal to 0. So that kills this term, right? Because that went to 0. So now what we're left with is I sub x equals I sub 2. All we have to do is define I sub 2. I sub 2, let's solve for I2 over here. I2, this is going to be pretty interesting, is just Vx, our test voltage, over our R2 value, right? That's it. The current times the resistance here should give us the parallel voltage right here. That's I2. So therefore, I like to use three dots for the represent therefore. I sub X is just Vx by, I, by R2. Great, so we know the value of R2, 
VX is our test voltage, and okay, I'm gonna have to scroll down here, sorry. And look what we've defined here, RTH. Now we can solve for RTH. RTH, we said, is our, theven is our test voltage over our short circuit current. So we said that's uh, VX by I sub X. And I sub X is really just, we said it's VX over R2, right? By R2. So these two cancel. This pops upstairs. So that's just equal to R2, which we defined up here as 39 kilo ohms. And there you go. We have our VTH and we have our RTH. So remember RTH was 39K. There's my little scroll bar. So up here we could simply define VTH in terms of our input voltage, which is 58.5 VIs. T8 point five VIs. That's our VTH. And our RTH was just equal to, we found, our R2 on this side, which is equal to 39 kilo ohms. There you go. So we've taken this rather complex circuit with a dependent voltage current source and simplified it down into a single voltage source and a single in series with a single resistor. In the next video, let's see. Yep, I guess we will uh, look at doing a the same thing, but instead of finding the Thevenin equivalent, we'll be looking at finding the Norton equi equivalent representation. Um, so until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know so by you can subscribe, hit the little like button, add it to favorites, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Um, that feedback is very helpful to me. Especially if I made a mistake, let me know. All right, guys, catch you next time.